Good morning, guys. Happy very Thursday, very early Thursday morning. It's a little after four o'clock here, and I'm up. Yep, <laughs> got work to do, so get going. Yeah, it was fun. Mrs. P and I canned fourteen quarts of salsa yesterday, trying to move some of these tomatoes. I mean, no faster than do I get the tomatoes processed and I go out and pick more. That one tomato I showed you a picture of yesterday, I picked five of them that size. If there's more out there to go get. So I'll be picking tomatoes again. I get glutted tomatoes right now. <laughs> Anybody need tomatoes? <laughs> Kidding. I'm not sending tomatoes out. All right. So let's get into the important stuff here. For the better part of at least two years, most prepper channels, me, Rudy over at Alaska Prepper especially, Jason at Angry Prepper, Magic Prepper, Prepper Now, I mean, you name it, it you know, a lot of the channels I felt Danny at Deep South Homestead, and not even a prepper channel, but still, have been talking about you need to get done what you are going to get done now, you know, putting product away, whatever it would be, lumber, food, bullets, anything like that because of inflation. And I mean, if you go back and watch the videos from all of us, we've been saying for a long time, buy it now, you'll be happy you did later. Well, welcome to later, okay? And I'm going to tell you this right now, and I'm not trying to be a fear porn or anything like this. Again, I'm dealing with reality here. If you haven't got it yet, get it now, because guess what? The prices are only going to keep going up. You know, anybody remember last December when Potato Joe uh, claimed inflation is at its peak. We've hit the top of inflation. It's all going to start coming back down now. Yeah, Joe. You're freaking clueless. Good reason why you'd be freaking clueless. I want to give you this one. This this is the problem with politicians. And this isn't the point of the video, but I want, I want to make this point. 62% of Biden's appointed advisors dealing with the economy have zero years business experience people that hand, handle uh, economic policy. I want to give you a quick idea of who that includes. Of course, Biden and Harris have no business experience. They've never worked in the, in the uh, private sector, never, never earned a dollar from a day's hard work, never produced anything. Okay, But let's give you some other ones. Attorney General Merrick Garland, Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Janet Yellen has no business experience, no idea what it takes to earn a dollar. Okay. Secretary of Veterans Affairs Dennis McDonough. Uh, everybody's favorite Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. Secretary of Labor Marty Walsh. Secretary of Health and Human Services Xavier Becerra. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Marcia Fudge. Of course, our ambassador for climate change, John Kerry, okay. Uh, the Office of Management and Budget Director, Shalanda Young. The Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. Our U.S. Trade Representative, Catherine Tai, and countless more have no experience in the business sector. Yet these are the people that are determining how our economic policy is written. They have no idea what it what it takes to earn a buck, to make a dollar, to produce something, to provide a service. Yet they're the ones that are going to determine for 330 million people how you can earn a buck, how you can go to work and do whatever. <coughs> so, I want to give you that as a point to start off, okay? But this is why I say everything that you need to get, you need to get now. <clears throat> like, if you don't already have it, whatever you need, get. 
I talked yesterday about the CPI print coming out at 9.1%, highest since 1981. Mind you, we calculated CPI different back then. So just giving you a case in point. This is going to be something that scares the crap out of people. Remember me telling you nine months ago, a year ago, watch the 10-year treasury. Because when we got over 1.5%, the economy was going to buckle, that Washington was going to panic. Guess where we are right now, in case anybody hasn't looked? Roughly 3%. Okay, and this is actually down a little bit over the last week or so. Yes, the Fed is panicking. Their policies that nobody has any clue on how to do it are failing and they're paying the price. Now, has anybody looked at Sri Lanka? All right, and I know everybody says, oh, gee, Sri Lanka, yada, da, 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 big deal, tiny little island, so what? Okay. Uh, Sri Lanka was a relatively wealthy com- country. And then they decided to hitch their wagon to all this green energy crap, okay? And their economy collapsed. The president is in hiding. He has left the country. The people have stormed the mansion. The the people have no food, no power, no nothing, all right? This This is what bad economic policy by a government does. Now... Everybody says, well, it's Sri Lanka, it's not the United States. We all know the, and again, I'm going to use the official numbers, okay? So nobody can say, you know, gee, you're making stuff up. No. We're a little bit more than $30 trillion in debt here in the United States, right? Okay. Yeah. I want to give you this. $30 trillion in debt is a lot of money. Do you know what the debt of the world is right now? All countries combined? As of the end of last year, end of 2021, so six months ago, global debt was $303 trillion. Now, it's a lot of debt, right? Anybody know what the global GDP is? Okay. And just in case you don't know what the definition of GDP, gross domestic product, is, that is the combined monetary value of the final goods and services. So basically whatever you pay for your widgets, to your waitress, to your dentist, to your groceries, to whatever, as the final value of what everything costs. The global GDP at the end of 2021 was $96,292,000,000,000. So we have, as a world population, three times as much debt as we have income. Now imagine your household on that money. Imagine you owed three times as much money as you have income. Now, and I know what people are going to say, well, sure, I do. I have a $200,000 house and I make $50,000 a year. Right there, there's four times as much. Okay. How long do you have to pay that house? 30 freaking years, right? Okay. But I want to give you that. So our, our global debt is three times our global GDP. That's dangerous. So now what do you have the Fed coming up to do? After the, after the CPI print yesterday, there is now an 80% chance that the, at the next FOMC meeting, the Federal Open Market Committee, they are going to raise the overnight rate a full percentage point. 80% chance of that. That's what Fed funds are doing. There's a 100% chance they're doing at least 75. Okay, 75 basis points, three quarters of a percent. 80% chance right now that they're going to raise rates a full percentage point. Now, what does that mean? The overnight lending rate is the rate that banks 
loan money to other banks to. Y'all have told me a million times, you go into the bank, you want to take out $10,000 cash, and the bank tells you, gee, I'm sorry, we don't have that much cash on hand. You have to make a request for it, okay? That's what it is. It's like, okay, we got to get the cash from somewhere else. we got to borrow it because banks invest your money, right? They go put it in the bond market or the real estate market or whatever. They don't just take your deposit and go, okay, we're going to put it in the safe in the back. No, they're trying to make money off of it. All right, this is the thing. That's why banks are, you know, a the way they're run now is pretty much criminal enterprise because they're speculating with your money. And if they lose it, they say, we can't pay it back. We just go out and you lose the money. So they're, they're, you're taking the risk and they're making the profit just so you understand how banks operate. So what happens is when the the rate goes up that 1%, that's going to travel into the lending rates that you have the lending rates, you know, the borrowing rates, what it costs you to your variable rate credit card. You want to go out and buy a car, the rates are going to go up. You want to buy, get a mortgage. We're seeing what's going on with mortgage rates. I mean, they've doubled practically in, in Biden's presidency. Okay. You know, what you could afford, you know, if you could afford a $300,000 house a year and a half ago, now you can only afford a $200,000 house. It's all the mortgage company will approve you for it because of these interest rates. So they're trying to jockey with the finances by raising rates, which is going to make debt harder to take on, which is what they're trying to do with debt. You know, if we, if we make people able to buy less with debt, that will slow down inflation. Okay? And remember, so inflation is supply and demand. That's a recipe for disaster. That's how you basically drive a country straight into recession, okay? Because we run on a debt-based economy. The whole world does. Again, like I said, three times as much debt as worldwide GDP. If it's supply and demand, well, you you got to control one or the two. You either control demand, which is what they're trying to do, or you control supply. What they don't figure out how to do is how to control supply. How could we control supply? At least domestically, it's real simple. Stop letting all these people come into the country. Okay. If there's less people, that means there is more apartments available, more electricity available, more food available. So stop bringing in all these Afghanis, stop bringing in all these Ukrainians, stop bringing in all these Central Americans, stop bringing in all these Mexicans. Close the freaking door, all right? There's the first first way to do it. Then ramp up again domestic production. Yes, I understand that people go, well, Americans are addicted to the cheap Chinese crap. Yes, we are. And that's a problem, okay? We are buying product that you get. Go to Walmart. Go to, go to Amazon and do a search for made in the USA. Okay? I mean, not don't do a search for fishing poles. Do a search for made in the USA. You'll be shocked how few products that you find that are made in the USA. So what you're getting is Chinese-made crap. And we all know Chinese made crap is good for 91 days. The warranty ends in 90 and it breaks on the 91st day. That's just the definition of Chinese made junk. Go back and look at the stuff that was made in the 1940s, the 1950s, the 1960s that was made in the USA. Go look at old craftsman tools when they had a lifetime warranty forever. Okay. That was it. You know, because it was made in the USA, it was quality stuff. Now I go, I've got a crescent wrench made by Vice Grip, okay? Good brand. Damn thing won't hold in one spot. I've got to readjust it every time I try to turn the uh, wrench, okay? Because it's crap, and it's not cheap, okay? So you go back to domestic production, domestic quality. Sure, we'll have to pay more for it. Once, not every 90 days. This is, this is the problem. You have all these people that want to be globalists. We can see what globalism has done. Globalism is destroying the global economy. What's going on here 
with this whole uh, raising rates and stuff like that, sure, it's going to affect us, okay? Things are going to get more expensive here. But that trickles around the world, guys. And you get countries that can't, that, that don't have the income. Remember, poor people here in the United States are wealthier than 92% of the people in the rest of the world. Okay, just giving you that as an idea. You know, our poverty level in other countries would make you rich. But you have countries like Egypt, like El Salvador, stuff like that, on the verge of Sri Lanka now because of what's going on with this global global economy conversion to green energy globalism crap it doesn't work do we need a great reset in the world yes not klaus schwab's idea of great reset we need a great reset in the world where countries need to be responsible for themselves before ever taking on other countries problems you know, and again, we can talk about Ukraine. Why the hell we're so concerned with Ukraine's border, but we're not concerned with our own makes zero sense, okay? The entire world cannot emigrate to the United States. It, We don't have the capacity for it, okay? You can't bring in all the poor people in the world and say, great, now you're rich because you live in the United States. All you do is take the United States and turn it into some poverty-stricken African nation. That's what's going on. But th this, is, this is what we are facing, guys. What is, what is in the future for all of us? As these interest rates keep going up, the world is going bankrupt. And it's going to come to a head. Every, all these people say, oh, the government's got it under control. The government will fix everything. No, the government's caused everything. Why? Because 62% of Biden's economic policy advisors have no business experience. They have no idea what they're doing, okay? They're just throwing darts at, at the newspaper and see if they can pick a stock that'll save the country. I mean, who knows what it, what they're doing, okay? But they don't know what they're doing. Not that I have the answers. I mean, I'm not pretending to be an economic policymaker. But a little bit of common sense goes a long way. Now, what we need to do, real simple, get everything you can now. You got 60 cans of beans, go get two more, okay? Because two months from now, beans are going to be more expensive. You know, you got bullets, buy another box of bullets. You use lumber, get more lumber. Stack, find pallets for free, bust them down, and there's your lumber. You're going to need it. Trust me, that's something that you want to talk about hoarding. If you live out in the country pellets okay uh lots of uses for them but this this is where the rubber meets the road guys we're getting closer and closer and closer to bankruptcy on a world stage and when that happens look what's going on in sri lanka right now teeny tiny little sri lanka Riots everywhere. The people have gone nuts. United States a lot bigger than Sri Lanka. Imagine the same thing here. Like I've said many times, when that finally happens, when that morning comes up, that you turn on YouTube, you turn on the news, you look at CNN or Yahoo or wherever you get your news, whatever it is, and you see worldwide bankruptcy. I want to be sitting on the front porch, rifle in hand, watching the chaos. I don't want to be in the middle of it. I don't want you guys there either. It's going to be a busy day. It's Thursday. You know that. We'll see you all later. I know. Long video this morning. Enjoy. Have a good one. Pimble out.